has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bands, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible. Hanging out the bands, eating the burger, eating the band, apple with the band, attitude, hanging around a bunch of bad, out of our band, take bad, love, bad, new, bad, bread, bad, attitude, bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City studios in the Brother Palacio, right across the river and through the woods from where Granny just got done rolling up a fatty at a cane train after we buried her brother today in New York City, the Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, to Brenton Travis, some kind of fashion shake it up, should do all my friend to come around, fight a fight a party up, rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, what a mess is tats and tatter, my brain splattered all over Manhattan, should do shake out who Oh, woo, woo. I think I might have caught some from Keith. Should do bet. Yeah, yeah, it's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Carver. Hi, this afternoon. Mafia is here. He went to the funeral as well. Appreciate that, brother. And Ty Stick, Big Daddy Jones, running it from Kansas City Mo at LTN. A birthday roll call on a, a dismal after Fourth of Pharrell holiday bash in the States. Deontay Johnson, the Steelers wide receiver, 26 today. In honor of his birthday, they're going to give him a lousy contract offer. I've already heard today they won't pay him anywhere near what McLaurin got in D.C. Austin Hayes, 27. Otani, 28 today. Jorge Polanco, 29. Philippe Vasquez, 31. The Pirates pitcher. Nick Anderson, 32. Ish Smith, 34. Megan Rapino, 37. Marco Estrada, 39. Richie Incognito, 39. Brandon Lloyd, 41. Tim Morrell, double nickels. Uh, Doug Wilson, legend. Hall of Famer, 65. James Lofton, Hall of Famer, 66. Johnny Rogers, Heisman winner, 71 at Nebraska. Goose Gossage, 71. Gary Matthews, 72. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. The Nets are taking their time with the KD and Kyrie deals, trying to make an outline to teams around the league for what they'd want back. Durant allegedly won't go to a team that doesn't already have two all-stars on it. Well, isn't that uh, peculiar? So now he gets to start calling the shots in his trade too, where he wants to play, who he's going to play with, what time the games start, whether the sun's out or not, what clothes he's going to have to wear. Can you believe this dude? I mean, honestly, I went through a litany today. I'll talk about it, Carver High, at, at great length, of all the lousy teams I'd ship his ass to. I mean, literally every terrible team in the league. That's where I'm trading him. I don't care what he wants. I'm not giving him what he wants. I mean, what kind of an absolute P is Sean Marks to just keep giving this guy whatever he wants? Is he going to sleep with your wife too? I mean, honest to Christ, Warriors uh, have some interest in Durant. If he goes back to the Warriors, what a phony ass B he is. What a phony ass B he is, really, honestly. I'm time. Boy, I got it right with a cream puff reaper nickname, didn't I? I hit that one on the head. And then uh, Kyrie Irving, don't get me started with Jesus. Don't even get me started. The Lakers and Nets have made no traction on a Kyrie trade. I mean, how do you trade either one of these guys? It's almost impossible. The Warriors re-signed uh, Kayvon Looney. Deontay Vincenzo also on there. Cavs and Garland, a deal. Bulls and uh, the Dragon, a deal one year. Bucks re-signed Serge Ibaka. Giannis, the only player from the 2013 draft, still with his original team that drafted him. Can you imagine every single player has been traded or has moved since that draft? They're all gone. Nets agreed to a one-year deal with TJ Warren. He's played about one game in the last three years. Great deal there, Sean. Let's get some more guys that are in wheelchairs. We welcome all of our radio affiliates to Coast to Coast on a Monday, Sirius XM, Channel 159, Sports Map Radio Number, Sports Byline, uh, ESPN, uh, Mighty Air 1090 in San Diego, near Tijuana, do you wanna? The Knicks are going to get busted for tampering. Uh, Miles Bridges' wife lays out the graphic details of his domestic violence, of uh, his alleged beating of her constantly. 
Bronny bawling at LeBron's alma mater. Did you see him throwing down dunks? What a revelation. LeBron's kid can dunk. Imagine that. Stop the press. Let's make it a national story. We'll send camera crews out there to watch the kid dunk. I got a bunch of friends that can dunk on my team. You should come film us. Uh, Summer League is underway in Cali and Salt Lake. We got today's games. Vegas Summer League starts Thursday. We got Lions share to do. JJ will be here. John Jastrzemski, all things New York from the ringer. And we'll talk baseball from the entire weekend, basically. We got everything for you. All the highlights. An Alvarez walk-off home run on Sunday for the Astros. Uh, How about the Astros pitchers combined to strike out 20 Angels on Sunday? Brewers beat the Cubs 5-2-10. and 10. We got a Caratini walk-off. Cubs and Brewers fans. How about a brawl on the 4th and Pharrell in the stands between fans? Uh, we've got everything, including uh, Dee Sclafani, dumper the year with an ankle surgery for the Giants. Uh, Mets beat the Red 7 board. Lindor with a big home run. Scherzer returns tonight for the Mets. We'll talk about that. DeGrom makes his first rehab start. Strikes out five. He was throwing heat. Uh, We're going to cover all the baseball, all the big hits, all the big stories. Tonight's games will break it all down. Today in sports history, you get that as well. The Joker storms back from two sets down to win at Wimbledon and reach the semis. The guy never loses ever, ever at Wimbledon. He never loses ever. Rick Haro on the show today. Adam Kaplan on the show today, our NFL insider. We got a little bit of college football news, a little teeny bit of hockey news, you name it. It's coast to coast. Go with us. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Pharrell, coast to coast. It's got to be young, trainable stars. What about Brandon Ingram in a piece from the Pelicans? How about send those two over, not done, but Brandon Ingram and Herbert Jones and someone else with picks? How about sending them to Brooklyn for Kevin Durant? He can slide right in with Zion. That team is making a move. They're yeah. ready to win. I don't think the Pelicans would be a bad play, honestly. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. One team I do have circled here. It's also AL East. What about this Red Sox team? They got a two and a half kind of, I want to say, quote unquote, comfortable lead in the uh, wild card race. But sitting at 43 and 33, this lineup, Ben, that home field advantage that the Red Sox always have. They're getting better relief pitching as well and from the starters. So watch out for this Red Sox team. Plus 1,200. Risk 100 to win uh, 1,200 bucks. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. When this is all said and done, Durant will be elsewhere, Kyrie will be elsewhere, Harden will be elsewhere, and they will have one playoff series victory to show for it. And that's not Kyrie's fault. That's not KD's fault either. This organization wanted control back. Here you go. You have it with absolutely nothing, nothing to show, Donnie. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Since April, has there been a better shortstop in fantasy baseball? He has 12 home runs, more than 50 runs driven in, and he's back to stealing bases again. You know, good luck caught up to him, and in May and June, he started to hit the ball better. I imagine Trevor Story will be the guy you thought you were getting with the 25 homer, 250 plus average. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. So you've got LeBron, Westbrook, and Kevin Durant. <laughs> sounds like a sitcom to me. It's, it's a disaster. Like a it's, it sounds, it's it does just, sound like a team that's going to win a championship. One basketball I, I and love... rolling cameras, basically, is what that is. Please. Just, like, show I me might buy, I might buy Lakers season tickets if that's a game. 
The Bostonian versus the book. Man, you smelling all this, Gary? Love that smell, KG. See, this is what retirement's all about. Slowing down, smelling stuff, like these. This smells like... Oh. <laughs> Covering the spread, baby! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! What are you looking at, Gary? Stop looking at my flowers, Gary. Avert your eyes. You got to get on this BetMGM app and bet 10 bucks on any Wimbledon match and win 200 bucks if any player records an ace in that match. I think you'll love it. Use the bonus code VOLLEY200. There's some great matches going on again tomorrow, the quarterfinals. Joker already uh, made the semis. 10 bucks you bet on Wimbledon and 200 is yours. If anyone has an ace, you're going to go use Volley 200 as your bonus code. All right, uh, Carver High, we bring him in on a Tuesday right after the 4th of Pharrell. And uh, as you know, Carver High, I failed in my bid to slip a large can of Guinness into the casket today at the uh, burial of the patriarch of the family, Uncle Huey. Uncle Huey was a legendary Belfast beer drinking wrestler. As you know, a scratch golfer and a soccer fanatic. And I tried to slip in a can of that delicious beverage, the Guinness in honor of his greatness with the uh, beer over the years and the relationship that he had. Uh, he loved the Guinness beer more than his own family. And uh, I was not allowed to do that today. I was, uh, they fought me off tooth and nail. Mafia was yeah. there. They all tried to shun me for trying to slip a Jimmy into the casket. That is not right. Uh, they should have allowed you to put that in there. Uh, look, my condolences to you and the family. Obviously, Uncle Huey uh, sounds very much like uh, my grandfather and his brothers uh, from the, the Whitehall section boys. of Dublin. Whitehall section of Dublin, uh, then a couple of them moved over to Huddersfield after that. But uh, golf, Guinness, soccer, uh, right up my alley. Uh, so uh, rest in peace. All the condolences to you guys. He used to tell me, uh, Carver High, one thing he did say to me. He'd say, you got a foul mouth, laddie. <laughs> 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 and now we get going uh, after the we got a little force of Friday. Today. Hold on, time out. I got a I lot, got of, lot of action. We got, we got a little action going uh, today. I can sense tough that, weekend. Like, as you know, I'm a doctor tough in my weekend. spare time. Uh, you got a little action. Tough weekend. What happened? We're okay. We're gonna get through. We're doing all right. Long weekend uh, out in the sun, as you can tell. Uh, but oh. we are ready to rock and we are ready to go. Uh, here after the Good fourth boy. of Pharrell weekend. Let's do Good it. Good laddie. Let's do it, baby. Uh, I really thought that we would come back here on Tuesday and the Durant stuff would be over. But that is not the case, Scotty. Uh, the Nets are taking their time with this trade, trying to make an outline to teams around the league for what they'd want back. And you said it perfectly before. I saw the story with Durant, too, about uh, how he'd he wants to go only to teams that have two All-Stars on already. Why the hell should this guy be allowed to say where he... Then stay where you are with Kyrie uh, and, and Ben Simmons, if you... Don't. Why, is, why should he be allowed to decide where he goes, uh, this Kevin Durant? I've had enough of him, too, Scotty. Do you think that there's any truth to the latest nonsense that, uh, you know, he might change his mind and that he doesn't want to be traded after uh, all? Like, they're reporting that well, today that... Now today, I just saw it five seconds ago that this guy Perkins is saying the guy doesn't want to move. Wojnarowski's uh, arguing that fact. I'll tell you this. I don't care what he wants to do. Stay, leave, trade, go. Go to hell for all I care. But I'm telling you, I am not giving him what he wants. Uh, 
That is, to me, the final nail in the coffin, that this guy actually has the audacity to start demanding uh, that two All-Stars be on the team. How about whichever team I trade you to, both of those All-Stars are coming over here. You're not leaving with any All-Stars. Uh, you're not playing with any either. I'll tell you another thing I would do. These are the teams, and I know none of them will happen, but I would trade him literally to Cleveland, Charlotte, Indiana, Orlando, and, and that's it, literally, because they're not going to trade well, him back to Oak and- City. I'm not trading him anywhere he wants to go. Uh, this, this guy, what's next? Free sacks? Uh, you know, I, I don't get it. Like, I will trade him. If I trade him to the Warriors, literally, I want all of them. Poole, Wiggins, Wiseman, right. and uh, uh, Kaminga, and I want a number yep. one. I want all four and a number one. And then you will, by putting him with Curry, Green, and, and Thompson, and, and, and this guy again, uh, Durant, I think it will obliterate their team. So you have to give me the entire roster oh. and a number one. See that, and that's why you're starting to hear the stories that maybe he's better off staying. Because when you start to look around at all the options, there's probably not any that are very appealing to him. He wants Phoenix or Miami. Doesn't seem like he's getting that. The only way he can go to Miami is if they send Simmons too because of the Adebayo contract. You know, Adebayo and Simmons would have to be swapped. That's not happening. Phoenix doesn't sound like there's enough coming back to the Nets. The Nets have to get what they want too. Now the Warriors make sense, Scotty, in terms of what they could get back, right? I mean, you just said it. Wiggins, Poole, Kaminga, picks. Like, honestly, that's a real good haul for Kevin Durant if they could ever swing it. But here's why it's not going to happen, Scotty, because the Warriors aren't going to do it. They just won without him with all these young guys, and they've now set the groundwork to be able to win for a lot longer with the young guys. If I'm the Warriors, I don't want anything to do with Kevin Durant again. Listen, uh, it would be insanity, in my view, to give up on all of those players, Poole, Wiggins, uh, Kaminga, and uh, Wiseman. I mean, how stupid. I I don't even think they're that stupid to give up those four star young players, all of them in their prime, not not even coded in their prime yet, especially Wiseman and Kaminga. That guy jumps out of the gym. And I'm telling you, I wouldn't stop there. I'm, I'm asking for a number one as well. My goal would be to, as the GM, would be to get every talented player I can for him because that's what he's worth. Look what they got for Gobert. Give me every talented player you got and a traffic. My goal is to leave you naked at the altar when it's all said and done. You got Durant, you got Thompson, you got Dre Green, and you got Curry. And let me tell you something. I don't deny they're awesome, dynasty, the whole, whole deal. But I saw Dre Green, his game went right down the toilet this, this playoff season. He did nothing. He did absolutely nothing. He had nothing to do with that team winning a championship. Nothing at all. Green. And I'm telling you, I promise you, it's only going to get worse from here. It's only going to get worse from here. They never get better when they get older. None of them. None of them do. I don't care what anybody says. People say LeBron's better now than he was. My ass, he's better. You know what he is? He misses two months a year. He doesn't play for two months. Stop telling me about guys being better when they're older. They are not better when they are older. They go off the other side of the mountain and they go down real fast. So you can have Durant with his one Achilles and you can have Steph Curry and Clay because Clay wasn't anything either. What Clay have two good games the whole playoffs? So you can have that four pack. I'll take the other stars. Thank you very much. Uh, that is what I would do, but I don't think that that deal is going to be available to him. I think the people running the Warriors are a lot smarter than that at this point. All right, we'll come back, Scotty. Uh, we've got to do lion share. More NBA for you later on, including no traction on the Lakers and Nets uh, for the Kyrie trade. That's not happening anytime soon either.
If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Fantasy Sports Today. Dallas Garcia, I remember him seeing him in spring training, and my gosh, like he has brought Texas back to relevance here. He is 16th overall on the player Raider, exactly even with Shohei Otani. He's got power, he's got speed, he's getting great counting stats with RBIs, and he's got a good average. He's hitting 259 as of recording of this. I mean, he's really, he's actually surprisingly excellent for fantasy. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. When this is all said and done, Durant will be elsewhere, Kyrie will be elsewhere, Harden will be elsewhere, and they will have one playoff series victory to show for it. And that's not Kyrie's fault. That's not KD's fault either. This organization wanted control back. Here you go. You have it with absolutely nothing, nothing to show, Donnie. Only on SportsGrid. The morning after. One team I do have circled here. It's also AL East. What about this Red Sox team? They got a two and a half kind of, I want to say, quote, comfortable lead in the uh, wild card race, but sitting at 43 and 33. This lineup, Ben, that home field advantage that the Red Sox always have. They're getting better relief pitching as well and from the starters. So watch out for this Red Sox team plus 1,200. Risk 100 to win uh, 1,200 bucks. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. It's got to be young, trainable stars. What about Brandon Ingram in a piece from the Pelicans? How about some nose two over, not done, but Brandon Ingram and Herbert Jones and someone else with picks. How about sending that to Brooklyn for Kevin Durant? He can slide right in with Zion. That team is making a move. They're yeah. ready to win. I don't think the Pelicans would be a bad play, honestly. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the Book. By the way, the chat's blowing up. Brogdon, Brogdon to the Celtics. Done? Done. They got Gallinari and Brogdon? Making moves. Beautiful. I love the addition for Boston. Making moves, son? Brogdon's move. Look at my boy Brad is doing stuff. I I knew he'd be good at this job. Oh, you the Bostonian versus the Book. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is the Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, uh, Carver High. I mean, honestly, like, there's people talking everywhere I go. They say, uh, I watch your show, and uh, that thing you do with Carver High with the lion, I'm like, you mean the lion share? They're like, yeah. (laughs) Uh, They're like, "Uh, you're making me lots of money. Thank you. Have a nice day. And I'm like, good day, sir. Good day to you. Because we've been hitting tons of prop bets. The prop boat has been very active in Lagoon. It certainly has. We had a <clears throat> really good week last week, Scotty. We are going to try to continue to capitalize on that here this week. We start, as always, with the strikeout props, and look who it is. Returning to Pittsburgh for the first time as a member of the New York Yankees, it is Jameson Shots of Tyone. Yankees and the Buckos tonight at PNC, four and a half. Is the number for Tyone tonight, Scotty? Back in Pittsburgh, minus 135 to the over, minus 105 to the under. He has gone over four and a half in six of his last eight starts, and I think he will have a little extra in him tonight, Scotty, being back in Pittsburgh with that 9-1 and one record. Yeah, you know, it's weird. Uh, I actually don't believe the, you know, hundreds of players that have left Pittsburgh to go on to fame and fortune with other major league clubs actually have any angst 
toward the Pirates. Nice. They actually like the Pirates yeah. for letting them go and getting them yep. out of there to go play on winners like the Yankees, right? So the only thing is that a lot of guys like playing for the Pirates. They like that city. Yeah. They like the ballpark. Uh, I, I know they don't like the owner being cheap or anything like that. Fair enough. But they don't have a bad experience living there or playing there or being on the Pirates. Most of them leave. They don't come back looking for revenge. They actually just come back like, I liked it here. I had no problem here. This guy tonight, he'll have four and a half strikeouts. Listen to this. In the first inning. In the first inning. Now, remember, there's only three outs in the first inning. But he's going to have four and a half strikeouts in the first inning. He will have this over done so fast tonight, make your head spin. He's going to have at least eight to ten strikeouts against the Pirates tonight. Oh. Run to the window. Yeah, it's not even so much. It's not an angst thing because a lot of times it is. They're coming back to the place they used to be. I think, he, like you said, he loves it there. He's tight with Shelton. I think he wants to put on a show for the people of Pittsburgh because he is still loved in that city. And he does want to put on a good performance in front of those fans. Let's hope you're right tonight and we get 8 to 10 strikeouts. Next, Max Scherzer returns for the Mets in Cincinnati tonight. He has not started, Scotty, since May 18th. It's been a long time. And they're giving you a big number here. Six and a half, minus 160 to the over, plus 110 to the under. Over that number in five of his eight starts this year, those were all a very long time ago. I don't think he gets over this tonight, Scotty. I'm on the under. I think he comes back, not going to be able to go full throttle. He's going to go five innings, whatever it is. I don't see a lot of strikeouts for Max tonight, just getting working. Yeah, you know, I agree with you. I don't feel like uh, guys that have been out a while, uh, not just on a, a, on a one stint IL, you know, a couple of weeks. I'm talking about... He's been out and DeGrom have been out for, you know, over a month and a half now, at least both of them, right? I mean, DeGrom's been out the entire season. Uh, Scherzer pitched and then uh, left injured. So here's the deal. I don't expect guys to come out of that and just start, you know, you saw it's like every guy that has come off injury and come back. Remember Lance Lynn, he looked terrible in that first yeah. outing and didn't get it done in second, third, he got better and better. I think that's uh, what's going to happen here. I'm with you. I think the under's in play here, under six and a half, although uh, it's going to be great to see him pitching again. And I think the Mets will win the game. But I wanted to say this. They gave this guy $43 million per year. Get used to him being on the IL. Get used to him having oh, yeah. problems. Because the slightest tweak at all, he comes off the mound. He's smart. He doesn't let it turn into a, a vicious injury where he's out for months at a time. This injury clearly was a problem. He was out a month, whatever it is, and now he's back. But I think you have to be very careful with him because, uh, you know, flat out he's old and he's starting to show it. Remember with the Dodgers in the World Series and in the playoffs, he was nothing compared to how good he is. He was nothing. You know why? Because he's shot. He pitches too much. Too many innings, too many pitches, pitch count, everything else. For years and years and years, he's been a, a workhorse and a train, right? And now he's starting to show signs of cracking and breaking down, if you ask me. I am with you. Next, we will go to Sandy Alcantara of the Marlins. He's coming off, of course, that complete game performance against the Cardinals last week. Tonight, he has the Anaheim Angels down in South Beach. His number is six and a half. Over minus 165, under plus 115. Believe it or not, Scotty, as brilliantly as Sandy has pitched, uh, he has not struck out a ton of guys recently. He's under this total in four of his last five starts. But they have the Angels in town tonight who strike out a ton. He has more strikeouts Alcantara at home this year than he does on the road. I like the over tonight, Scotty. What did the Angels strike out against Houston over the weekend? 20 times in that one game? Give me Alcantara to go over tonight. So you're basing it on the fact that, like, uh, the Angels had 20 the Angels guys strike out. Angels strike out a ton. Uh, well, that's just an, an example Sunday. of, yeah, an ex example of how much they strike out. Angels are a team that does tend to strike out a lot. Alcantara better at home striking guys out. I'm going to take the over tonight. You know, 
I can dig it. I, I, I want to lean with you on this. I really do, but I'm going to go under. He has not been right. striking guys out lately. He's been finding a way to win. The other day, he won a game two to one uh, because they scored late and won the game for him. He hasn't been pitching great. He's been pitching well. And so I'm going to go with the under and that short payout of a buck 15. Uh, and finally, we have Michael Kopech of the White Sox. They've got the Twins tonight. His number, Scotty, five and a half. Under in four of his last six, but did have seven strikeouts against the Twins late April in Minneapolis. Uh, I'm going to try to get over with Kopech tonight. Yeah, I'm going to stay under uh, again on this one based on uh, I, just the Twins are too tough in the batter's box for me. I don't care where they play it. When they... Uh, struck out a bunch in April. It was freezing ass in Minneapolis the first two months of the season. They're playing in freezing cold weather and snow. Uh, and I don't blame them for all going up and striking out and sitting back down in the warm dugout with a coat on. But now it's July, and I think it's hard to uh, strike them out. I think they're a tough team. They've uh, held on to first place. I'm going to give them more credit. I'm going to go with the under again here, and uh, Vegas likes that too. All right, let's rip through uh, the home runs for tonight. We're going with all guys who have been very hot recently, Scotty. Reese Hoskins of the Phillies, four homers in his last five games. He's going right. This price has actually jumped up to plus 225 now uh, for Reese Hoskins. There he is to hit a homer tonight, Scotty. Stay hot against the awful Nationals. You know, why not? I like that. If he's hit four in five games, I'm going to go with him again to do another one tonight. Uh, same with Eduardo Escobar of the Mets. He hit three home runs over the weekend against the Texas Rangers. They're in Cincinnati tonight, as we know. The balls fly out there. Plus 310 for Escobar tonight. Uh, I'll take a, a flyer on him not uh, hitting one tonight. He's hit him, and now he won't. Uh, I think the number's too big. One of the streakier home run guys in the majors this year has been Trevor Story, Scotty. When he gets hot... He hits him in bunches, and he's kind of getting into one of those right now. Two in the last week, one yesterday against the Rays, plus 250 for Trevor Story tonight, once again against the Rays at Fenway. I mean, at Fenway, it's like you hit a pop fly, and it's a, a home run, so I'll go with it. Yes. And finally, uh, Marcus Simeon also has been hot the Rangers. Three homers in the past week, and they're giving you a fat price here down in Baltimore tonight. We scored a lot of home runs there yesterday. Plus 500. Simeon's been finding it, Scotty. This is my deep shot tonight. Well, I'll go with you then on it. Why not? Uh, if that thing hits and we win a nickel, I'm all in. So whatever you're feeling, that vibe, I'll go with you. Let's go, baby. Uh, all right, game props. Here we go. Astros to win an over 8.5 run scored against the Kansas City Royals. They both they went way over the 8.5 yesterday, and the Astros won in a walk-off. Plus 170. Astros win over eight and a half in the game. Yeah, again, I'm with you because the Royals stink and the Astros just pour awesome. it on and they're at home. I'm going to go with it. In fact, I think the Astros get the nine by themselves tonight at home against the Royals. Orioles and the Rangers down at Camden. Saw a lot of runs yesterday. I'm expecting again tonight. Both teams to score five or more runs at plus 270. Five of them, uh, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, teams. I'm going to say yes. Uh, I'm going to say yes. I, although, know what? You know, I'm going to say no. I, I think Texas right. is going to give up the runs, and uh, their pitcher stinks. So I think the uh, I think the Orioles, you know, he's a three ERA. I'm going to say no. And I always give you an under. I'm looking for a slow start tonight, first five innings, between the Giants and the Diamondbacks. Under four and a half. In the first five at plus 110. Slow start with Alex Wood and company on the mound tonight. I'll, I'll go with that because the Giants are slumping and they're not hitting and they're not scoring runs, so why not? There you go. The lion's share for Tuesday night. Let's get it, baby.
The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. Pharrell, coast to coast. The PGA Tour Commissioner, not good from him the last couple of months. I mean, okay, we're going to uh, do exactly what Live Golf have done. We're going to have our own eight event mini series next year. $160 million, no cuts, smaller fields, $20 million. That's great, boys. Where, where'd this $160 million come from? You didn't have it two months ago. We couldn't have used that to sort of grow the game and stop these players jumping ship. Please, I can't entertain it, Scotty. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. I do think it's, it's, it's a good fit. Let's see what happens, but are they better than the Warriors? No. Are they better than the Grizzlies? I still don't think so. Denver's going to get back, you know, their two guys, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. Are they better than them? Probably not. So all you've done is maybe said you're the fourth, the fifth best team in the Western Conference. Betting above the rim. The morning after. You kind of got to remember voting on these MVPs, voting on these Cy Young Award winners. It's like the Heisman Trophy. It's not going to come down to, oh, who has the highest OPS? No, it's human beings voting on it. So who's going to be in vogue at the end of the season? Who's going to be being talked about towards, you know, playoff time? So Goldschmidt at the top, he is kind of checking some of those boxes, Ben. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. News comes out. It was USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. How could you have two teams on the West Coast playing the Heartland, playing against, you know, in Chicago against Northwestern, or playing Ohio State in Columbus, or going up to Ann Arbor and playing Michigan, or East Lansing with Michigan State? It's going to happen here. Why? Football rules the roost, and money, the almighty dollar, is what matters most here. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In game all live in. prime oh, time. The major, the champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Hey, my man. Remember how intense I was when I was in the league? Sure. But now, I'm retired. Got everything on chill mode. Chill mode, Mr. Garnett. <laughs> Boom! That's what I'm talking about. Big ticket hitting big parlays. Whose house is it? Big ticket house. Whose house is big it? Big ticket's house. Big ticket's house. Woo! It's big ticket's house. It's my house! What? <laughs> All right, John Jastrzemski is our good friend and a regular contributor to Coast to Coast from The Ringer and Spotify. New York, New York is the name of his kick-ass show. You got to check it out. If you haven't heard it yet, you lose. Uh, hopefully, you'll uh, get in line and uh, start listening, and then you'll be able to get caught up on everything that matters in New York sports. Uh, you went golfing and to the uh, Travelers Golf Tournament as well with your boy Carver High. It was like a fan reunion with all the former radio colleagues from WFAN that went on this uh, binge drinking, golfing, uh, blowout weekend. How did that go, JJ? Give everyone an idea of what it's like hanging with Carver High for three days when there's unlimited Bud Lights available. It was an unbelievable time, Scotty. Look, the travelers, I think I'm still sweating out the Sam Adams that we consumed on the golf course. 
Then you're throwing back a few Bud Lights at craps table. You have Mike Carver and myself getting after it, getting down, cashing. You know the deal. Um, he played well on the golf course on Sunday. I had a mental breakdown on the golf course on Sunday. But, hey, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And overall, as a whole, kick-ass weekend. Good seeing our guy. Good seeing CeeLo. Good seeing Met Tom Lugauer. It was like an old-school reunion, dude. It was great. You guys are rock stars. I got to tell you, living large. And then Carver High was out at some fancy country club this weekend. Had it again with a sunburn and an alcohol problem, but he was hitting them straight. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, I mean, the problem is, as you get later and later into the back nine, is the uh, the beverages are being consumed. It's like, all right, hit the one that's in the middle. So that might have been Mikey's strategy. You never know. Uh, I, I should take that strategy, quite frankly. And I think it would work better for me. All right, JJ, uh, tell me what you thought of the front office of the Knicks and their handling of the draft. It was weird, but clearly their plan was to get Jalen Brunson at all costs. Now, I like Jalen Brunson. I think he's a solid player. Uh, the Knicks have desperately needed a point guard for a long, long time. They overpaid. But let's be honest, Scotty. You know, the more and more you look at these NBA contracts, you can't judge 20 or $25 million like it was five years ago or like it was 10 years ago because that cap keeps going up. These contracts get sillier and sillier by the minute. So Jalen Brunson makes them a better team. The question is how much better. And I think my overall take as a whole here with the Knicks is that sooner or later, this front office that has the CAA ties, um, that is supposed to be so well connected within the NBA, there's got to be at some point a bigger move that's coming. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's Donovan Mitchell. I don't know if something a year or two from now, but that to me is the issue. Can they find the taker somehow, some way for Julius Randle? That would be a minor miracle if they're able to pull that off. So the Knicks are better. They'll be more competitive, but I'm going through the Eastern Conference, Scotty. I don't have them as one of the top six teams. No way. Yeah, and do you think that uh, Randall will ever be as good as he was uh, the year he got the bag of money? No, I don't. I think it's really as simple as that. He was all NBA two seasons ago. Maybe it was the idea that he wasn't playing in front of fans, but Julius Randall will never be that guy. And I'm not saying that Julius Randall can't be a productive NBA player. He can have his moments where he flashes and whatnot. But the idea of him being all NBA, no. And that's why you think about it. If the Knicks could do it over again, Scotty, there is no way they give him that extension. They paid him off of his career year. He regressed to the player for the most part that he was throughout his career. And that's the guy we saw last year. It's going to be very, very difficult for the Knicks to move that contract. So that's why they, they need something out of Randall. Maybe Randall playing better next year will enhance his trade value. Maybe that's something you got root for. So let's talk about this mess in Brooklyn uh, and everything that's happened. Uh, which one makes you angrier? The way Kyrie Irving uh, cost the team last season, in my opinion, uh, with his uh, non-vax, all that nonsense, and then uh, – See, everyone's entitled to do whatever they want with a vaccine. I get that, JJ, but he ruined their season. I mean, he never played. Uh, he, he never played in New York. He never played in Toronto. He never played. And then when he did play in the playoffs, they got swept. He did nothing. So, I mean, that's all that matters, right, is the playoffs. And then you're the best player in the league. I mean, this guy's one of the most unstoppable guards in the entire NBA, but he did nothing. Durant did nothing but turn the ball over in every game against Boston. I never seen that guy turn the ball over more than that. He got stripped of the ball out of his hands at least 10 times in that series. It was embarrassing. And now they both won out and they both have all these demands where they want to go, who they want to play with. How do you deal with it, JJ, if you're uh, the Oriental rug, otherwise known as Sean Marks, everybody walking all over him? Pretty simple, Scotty. When it comes to Kevin Durant, he's under contract for four more years. So unless I'm getting the moon and the stars and I really can reset my organization, meaning tons of picks, all-star, the crazy demands that we've heard about, 
not a rush to trade Kevin Durant. I know we live in this player empowerment era within the NBA, but Kevin Durant signed a contract a year ago. So for the time being, I'm making him honor that. Um, as far as who do I blame more, look, everything you said about Irving is completely spot on. Whether he wanted to make it about Kyrie Irving, the idea that he doesn't go and get the vaccine, the idea that he doesn't play in any of the home games was a monumental distraction. But if you're asking me who I have a bigger problem with, I knew what I was getting with Kyrie Irving. We know this, Scott. He's always been a knucklehead. He's always been about himself. He's always been a guy that's been very odd. Durant was supposed to be the poster of stability for Brooklyn, you know? And the idea that Brooklyn gave Kevin Durant everything he wanted. You want a coach? We'll give you a coach. You want James Harden? We'll get you James Harden. You want Ben Simmons? We'll get you Ben Simmons. You want this? You want that? We'll get you whatever you want. And for him, because, oh, the team doesn't want to give Kyrie Irving more than 30 something million million for next year, now that is the, the, the guarantee for you to go and ask for a trade. It's a lame look for Durant. It's par for the course for Durant. He's an all-time great player. Probably one of the 15 or 20 best players in the history of the NBA, but there's no other way around it. The fact that he didn't win in Oklahoma City, goes to Golden State to a ready-made team, and now doesn't win in Brooklyn and doesn't even get him to an NBA Finals, that is a major, major blemish on that resume. Where do you think he ends up? That's a loaded question. I thought Miami, because of Pat Riley, no state income tax, they're always a player for these sort of dudes. Um, but I had Ian Begley on the show a couple of days ago mention the idea of Toronto, which kind of threw me a curveball. I'm like, Scotty, Toronto? But it makes sense because of what they could give up. It makes sense because they've gone down this road with Kawhi Leonard in the past and it ended up leading the Toronto Raptors to an NBA title. So my guy Begley is well-connected around the league. He's throwing Toronto out there. I'll still stick with Miami, though. Wow, it really is uh, frustrating, I, I got to tell you, uh, to watch it all uh, play out. It's, it's really driven me crazy, and I'm upset about it because I love uh, watching both of those teams, the Knicks and Nets, and they're both so uh, damn depressing to watch uh, these last few years. I mean, honestly, when you win uh, – you know, a couple of years ago, the Nets were uh, really tough. You know, they went into the playoffs, they won around, blah, blah. The Knicks did the same. But the Knicks have gone backwards from when they won 54 games. Uh, the Nets now have these superstars, and they never did anything with them. And when they lost 18 to 21, whatever it was this year, that was it. I can barely watch them anymore. It sucks so bad to be a basketball fan in New York with these two teams. It drives you crazy. All right. The Yankees losing those games to the Astros. Let's say the four games in the Bronx, uh, two of them, they could have, they had walk-offs by judging the front end and back end, the bookends of the, of the series. Otherwise, JJ, they lose all four games. Then they go down and lose to them two to one in uh, the game last week, the one game. Now they're going to go back and play them two more. Is this their kryptonite, the Astros? They beat everyone, but they can't beat them. And it seems like they could have lost five games to them, even though it was three. Scotty, they got to show me that they can beat the Houston Astros when it matters. And look, I think this Yankee team is better equipped than they were in 2019. Their starting pitching is a heck of a lot better. Remember, Garakol was an Astro. Now he's a Yankee. Cortez, Severino fully back. Yankee pitching has been outstanding. But that Astro team is they, – they, they're darn good. I mean, you think about their pitching – their relentless lineup. The Yankees can never get Jose Altuve out. Uh, your Don Alvarez is an absolute stud. I think we're on a collision course with those two teams matching up. I think they're the two best teams in all baseball. I think it's a coin flip series. I think the Astros should be a slight favorite because of what they've done against the Yankees in the past. But home field advantage could be a difference. And the Yankees got to make a move or two. If they think they can run out that stiff Joey Gallo and play him in a postseason series, they got another thing coming. He's an embarrassment. He's a disgrace. He's a top five most hated Yankee for me. Uh, I, I cannot believe there were stat geeks out there defending him in April and May. Oh, they're telling me about hard hit rate. They're telling me about BAPIP and all these dopey stats. He stinks. He's a losing player. He's not cut out for New York. And they have a hole at that bottom of the order. They need an outfielder. They might need two outfielders. But I do like the Yankees 
where they're at now compared to the last couple of years, no doubt. Aaron Hicks, uh, who we call Hack, uh, is uh, right there with him. They should be lovers, those two. They're both so miserable. And when he hit that ninth inning three-run shot to tie the game, it's the first hit he's had in his entire Yankee career. He's been so awful. That Aaron Hicks is bad luck. I don't want him anywhere near my family, my neighborhood in New York City. I want nothing to do with that guy either. He and Ernest Julio Gallo should go to hell, both of them. Uh, Max Scherzer returns tonight, JJ. What do you expect, and how long before we see Mr. DeGrom? It's a great question on DeGrom. I mean, the fact that he's making a rehab start, you'd have to figure, Scotty, within the next three to four weeks. Look, hopefully the weather is going to cooperate in Cincinnati. I heard it's like hailing. I heard it's an absolute nightmare. So we might be talking about Scherzer going tomorrow. But look, I think there's a big difference between Max Scherzer and Jacob DeGrom and what Mets fans can expect. We haven't seen DeGrom on a big league mound now in a year. So there's a million-dollar question about how his body is going to hold up, especially, I mean, in these in this rehab start, the guy's throwing 100, 102 miles an hour for two innings. That's great. Can he do that start after start after start? I, I, I don't have the answer for that. Scherzer, I think, will be far more consistent. He's an absolute beast. And in some ways, this absence for him may end up being a blessing. 20 seconds. Do the Braves catch the Mets and win the East? They might catch them at some point. Mets schedule way too soft in September. Mets are winning the NL East. Wow, how about that guy? John Jastrzemski, our favorite from The Ringer and Spotify. Check out New York, New York. John, always good to see you, my friend. Hit him straight, brother. Scotty, you're the best. All the best to the front on the bench, guys. All the love. See you, boy. I'm in. the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice the morning after you kind of got to remember voting on these MVPs, voting on these Cy Young Award winners. It's like the Heisman Trophy. It's not going to come down to, oh, who has the highest OPS? No, it's human beings voting on it. So who's going to be in vogue at the end of the season? Who's going to be being talked about towards, you know, playoff time? So Goldschmidt at the top, he is kind of checking some of those boxes, Ben. The Sports Grid Network. Betting above the rim. Think about what you have just done with the Clippers. You can roll out John Wall, Paul George, Kawhi, and I haven't even talked about Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard and Amir yep. Coffee. Like, what? You could argue that the LA Clippers have the most depth in the NBA and should seriously be considered the biggest threat if KD goes there. Betting above the rim. The early line. News comes out, it was USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. How could you have two teams on the West Coast playing the Heartland, playing against, you know, in Chicago against Northwestern, or playing Ohio State in Columbus, or going up to Ann Arbor and playing Michigan, or East Lansing with Michigan State? It's going to happen here. Why? Football rules the roost, and money, the almighty dollar, is what matters most here. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Harrell with your Sports News Minute. USFL riveting television on Sunday at 7.30. Tom Benson Memorial Stadium in Canton, Ohio. The Birmingham Stallions and the Philadelphia Stars. It's the championship of the league. Is the league successful by all metrics? Many say yes. About 700,000 viewers on average. Good number. Peaked at that million number a little bit, but also down to 181,000 the last week. Bottom line is they not have to compete with NFL or college. 
They have to compete with Formula One and other events, especially since Fox is throwing 50 million times three at them. Next year, will they have the dollars to expand into other markets? They're already looking at investors. Philadelphia, for example, playing for the championship. Nobody's seen them in Philadelphia. That has to change. And then finally, XFL, ESPN, other competition for other spring leagues. We'll see how it all shakes out. All right, Carver, uh, you still got some uh, residual NBA skinny for me, don't you? I do, and I have one more uh, piece of net stuff for you, and you guys have discussed it already. Uh, no traction, Lakers and Nets on the Kyrie trade. Uh, there was uh, some hot speculation throughout the 4th of Pharrell weekend that the Nets uh, were warned to the Westbrook for Kyrie straight-up deal. Uh, but apparently that has uh, cooled off a little it's just bit. A terrible, so, that's uh, just a terrible trade. Yeah. That, that's what that is. It's, uh, Kyrie Irving yeah. is uh, any more twice as good as uh, Russell Westbrook's yes. game. Twice as good. Yes. All that that is is just a straight money swap, not a straight talent swap. Uh, that, that is for sure. Uh, Warriors re-signed Kavon Looney. Warriors signed Dante DiVincenzo, the great Dante going to the Warriors uh, to fill some space after they lost a few of their guys. The Cavs and Darius Garland, five years, $193 million. Man, these guys get this money quick nowadays in the NBA. Bulls signed the Dragon to a one-year $2.9 million deal. Bucks re-signed Serge Ibaka. Giannis, the only player from the 2013 draft still with his original team. Think about that. You're talking... Two ra- that's both rounds of the draft. So 60 picks. Only one guy uh, from nine years ago still with the original team. That's, that's pretty wild. Well, that's kind of prima donna coffee, isn't it? They all want to yeah. play somewhere else. None of them are happy. Uh, and the money they make is, is surreal. Think about this. You're telling me that Goran Dragic, the dragon, who's better than all these guys uh, when he plays, right? He's only worth two point nine million, but you're paying guys thirty million a year, forty million a year. But as well, but that guy's worth two million. I mean, honestly, that guy is worth ten to twelve million to me. Anything you're telling me that that guy, what that guy does on a basketball court, scoring and passing, that he's worth two million dollars. That's it. It's all BS. And I want to start swearing right now. Dragon.